How much of Toronto's real estate do you think is currently valued at more than $1 million? Think about a percentage and see if you're right because today we're looking at the change in million dollar listings ever since the beginning of this year. And you might be surprised at what the answer is coming right up. Hey guys, Fred Tam here and welcome back to this week's episode of the Toronto Real Estate Market Update. If this is your first time here, welcome to the channel. I'm here every single week giving you the best real estate tips and latest market updates. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And today we're looking at the market with a focus on what's happening with million dollar listings. Because as we all know, we are now back in a very active real estate market with multiple offers happening each week. And here's a cool fact for you to keep in mind the next time you're out shopping for your next home. Most Toronto properties for sale are sold on either a Monday or Tuesday. The reason why most properties sell on either a Monday or Tuesday is a result of those bidding wars. And if you've ever worked with a realtor before to put together an offer, who then lets you know that time is of the essence, it's likely because offers are being reviewed on a specific date, which I have found in my experience to commonly take place on either a Monday or Tuesday. And these bidding wars will sometimes drive up market prices, which, to be honest, doesn't make a lot of sense right now, and I'll share with you why that is in just a few moments when we get into the market update. But resale homes isn't the only market where bidding wars are taking place right now. The rental market also has landlords confident in their properties that they're also setting up bidding wars. The ad says that tenant selection will be hosted on Tuesday, August 4th at 7 p.m. Now, I'm not sure if landlords are really in a position to be doing this, especially if rents have fallen in several parts of the GTA which yes, might have come back up ever since the beginning of the pandemic. And during that time, apartment rentals were down 25% from the same time last year, while the number of new listings were up by 42%. But either way, it's unfortunate to see that some homeowners are encouraging this sort of behavior, even in the rental market, because it's bad enough that property values keep rising every single year while pushing buyers out of the market. But now those same buyers who have potentially turned to the rental market as an alternative solution to affordable housing are also now faced with the same challenge to compete for rentals. And sure enough, someone will pay a grossly inflated price, which then drives up market values and raises the bar for buyers and also now renters. And you can definitely count on this being one of the reasons why home prices keep rising. Last week, the average selling price for a freehold single family home was just over $1.4 million. This is the third week in a row average prices have gone up, each time going up by about 2%. And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that there are more buyers in the market right now than there are sellers, which can potentially make it a great time for homeowners to sell their homes. Because if buyers are competing in multiple offers, then it makes sense why home values are rising week over week. But what's interesting is that although home prices are going up, sales might actually be coming down. Sales of freehold single family homes in Toronto are down by 16% with only 317 homes that sold. This is after a three week period when sales were rising at a rate of about 5% per week. And it's normal to see sales fall during this time of the year, which you can see last year in the summer as sales fell after spring. But remember that every industry has been sort of operating upside down this year and real estate is no exception because the summer market we're in right now is actually more like the spring market we expected to see under normal market conditions. So if sales keep falling while prices are high, what's going to happen with the fall real estate market? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below and make sure you also give this video a thumbs up if you're gaining value and learning something new. Because if the trend continues with sales falling, then it should really only be a matter of time before buyers realize prices are in a range they shouldn't be in and might actually be worth waiting for the market to correct itself. But one thing to be cautious of is the amount of inventory we have in Toronto. The number of homes listed on the market came down by about 17% last week with only 517 new listings on MLS. And it's no secret that buying a home in Toronto can be somewhat difficult given that home prices are consistently above the $1 million range. In fact, of those 517 homes that were listed last week, 60% of them were listed for $1 million or more. And of all the freehold listings currently available on MLS, 78% of them have an asking price of at least a million dollars. So the best thing you can do if you're in the market to make a move and purchase your next home 
is to make sure you're prepared with a reliable team of professionals who can guide you through the process and to help you be successful with your offer in the event you find yourself competing in multiple offers. And last week, we talked about how the condo market might in fact be shifting into a market in favor towards buyers. And this week's numbers reinforces how this might be true. Condo prices are down 2% from the previous week. The average selling price was $663,000. Overall, condo prices are down by about 11% from the peak earlier this year when the average condo selling price was $746,000. And this is the second week in a row that condo prices have come down, but now let's also take a look at condo sales volume. We also saw a huge drop in condo sales, which are down 29% with only 342 units that sold last week. And the number of condos listed on the market also came down by 8%, with only just over a thousand condos listed. And at this time, we don't know if condo listings are either going up or down since they're fairly balanced week over week. So if condo inventory keeps on rising while prices and sales continue to fall, then it's still possible we might see the Toronto condo market be more in favor towards buyers as we get closer to the fall season. And on top of that, 54,000 condo units currently in various pre-construction stages in Toronto will eventually add to the amount of inventory available in the real estate market which further increases supply and potentially can cause prices to fall even more. And if 78% of all active freehold listings on the market are asking for at least $1 million, we might actually see the number of million dollar listings also come down in the second half of this year, which definitely helps home buyers with more affordable housing as supply increases. But now what's interesting is that no matter which week you look at so far this year, the average number of homes listed at least for $1 million was 62%. So essentially for every five homes put on the market for sale, three of them will be listed for at least $1 million. So now let's recap on the market stats from today. We know that home prices have been rising for the past three weeks, but sales have actually come down by 16%, which might be an indication that buyers are slowing down. And new listings are also down by 17%, which could create more competition for buyers if inventory continues to fall. And now with condos, prices have fallen for a second week in a row, but it was condo sales and volumes that took the biggest hit with a 29% drop in sales. New condo listings on the other hand also fell, but I would consider this to be still balanced overall. And if condo prices and sales continue to fall while inventory levels remain high, then it's still possible that we might enter a buyer's market in the condo housing sector. And these stats are changing every single week. So to stay updated, subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you can always stay updated. And if there's something you want to learn more about or hear in the next episode, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to respond to you. As always, thank you for tuning in and taking the time to watch my videos and I'll see you guys next time.